Hey ladies, happy Friday. I am just popping in here to share some encouragement with you. Uh, as you know, this group is a group for women to encourage women. And I really feel like God put it on my heart to encourage women on who they are and their worth and their value and just to encourage them. So one of my gifts is encouragement. And I've been through some crazy stuff uh, as a lady. I hate Katrina. And so what I want to do, my heart is to share with you things that kind of um, you can avoid and then just to pour into you. Hey, Cassandra, to pour into you um, and to just encourage you of who you are and how amazing you are and how blessed and wonderful you are. So tonight's video, I want to share with you just a little bit about knowing your worth and oh, you're so precious. I love you. And just knowing your worth and um and from there just kind of hey katrina and just kind of walking in that so when i i have a lot of church language so excuse me um i haven't been saved long but i have some church language so i'm trying to break that down so if i ever say anything that doesn't make sense and it sounds too churchy or biblical let me know because you know it's like a language um but what i want to start off with which is a, a couple scriptures that are very popular if you've been to church people are always saying them so if it's cliche forgive me but here we go so i'm gonna look at proverbs 31 which says the word i'm sorry <laughs> proverbs 31 10 an excellent wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels the heart of her husband trusts her and she will lack no of she will have no lack of gain and he will have no lack of gain. Let me say that again. An excellent wife who can find. That's why I titled this because I'm talking about you. And the heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. Okay. She does some good and no harm all the days of his life. Okay. So um, this Proverbs 31, we've probably heard this a lot. It is a very... A beautiful set of scriptures that kind of outlines what God's girls look like. And so I want to encourage you that is that you have such worth and value that the Bible says that when a man finds you, he finds a good thing. Like when Adam was in the garden alone, God was like, it's not good. He needs to be alone. He needs help. And we look at him. We know he's perfect, but he needed help. So sometimes our world distorts things and said women are less than. We went through centuries of that. And now we have a new kind of idea that says women are, you know, the boss. And it's not that we're equal. We're equal. Now, sometimes it looks different. It looks off balance, but God says we're equal. We're like this. He made us together. So I want to encourage you of a few things um, that you may not know. Amen, sis. Hey, Krista. A few things you may or may not know, but I want to encourage you. So we have all kinds of women in here. Women who have married 50 years. Women who are still looking. Women who have been divorced, are divorced. Women um, like me who have had multiple serious relationships that will leave you toe up. And so what I want to do is just speak to you if you are seeking someone or if you are getting serious and I just want to encourage you what to look for. So when I was in my 20s, I spent all of my 20s in long term, not so good relationships. OK, so I spent all the same all my pretty years before I got these forehead lines, all my cute little 20 year old years in bad relationships okay now some of them were abusive some of them were just beneath me not saying i'm all that but beneath me some of them were uh just unevenly yoked because i was trying to go toward god girl i got you yeah we're gonna talk about all that I'm trying to go toward god and um just that division so i'll tell you this thank you thank you <laughs> So I'll tell you this few things. I feel like the Lord is saying to us that um, we've kind of lost the art of being ladies. So this world is telling us to be tough. This world is telling us to be uh, fighters. This world is telling us to um, take the bull by the horns and compete. Okay, so number one, you don't compete for a man's attention. That's number one. Okay, so that may come with the confidence thing, maybe, or maybe for me, I thought I was all that. So I thought there was no way like I never met a man who wasn't like, Oh my gosh, she's gorgeous. So I just thought that they would just 
Like they would just think I was everything. There was no way. So that led me down a trap of trying to change men and get their attention and affection when they weren't for me. So number one, that also goes with cheating. If you got a guy and you can see he has his eyes on more than one girl, don't compete. You are not someone who, this isn't the Olympics, right? You're not going to get a silver, bronze, and gold medal. No, we're not doing that. You're number one. You're gold. And who is meant to have you will see you as gold. And you don't have to compete. Okay, so a lot of times we start to compare. Well, she's got a smaller waist. Her hair's nicer. She's got a bigger butt. Oh, she's taller. She's thinner. Mm -mm. We don't compete because who's for you is going to love you for you. And all the stuff that we look at as women, they, they're not even worried about it. Unless he's like really like one of those superficial guys, they're not worried about it. We're worried about it because we're being fed images that tell us what to look like. Okay, so I'm a health coach. I get it. But I can tell you one thing. I am not perfect. I have the same stretch marks and mama pooch I'm trying to get rid of. I got some flabby wings I'm working on. Like I'm not perfect. And I'm thankful because I have a man who doesn't mind. But can I tell you that there were men who mind it and made me feel very small about it. Okay. You don't want that. Any man who you walk away from feeling like you're two feet tall. Do not compete. Do not compete against another woman. Do not compete for his affection. That's number one. So I can tell you stories about that and I probably will. There's probably a book. I'm trying to write a book. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But there's a book. Because I've been through it, y'all. But God has kept me because he knows that my heart meant well. And he knows me. He knows I was trying. Who knows? Might have been daddy issues. I don't know. He knows. And he's kept me. So that's number one. Do not compete against other women. Do not compete for affection. Is he, if he's got a Roman eye, let us eye roam. You're not, you know, no. Okay, so number one. That's number one. So number two, if he says or shows that he's a jerk, believe him. Thank you, sister. I love y'all. Y'all make me feel so pretty. I got my little twist in here. Trying to do this protective style on a Friday night. So thank you. Yes. Yes, ma'am. It's coming soon. So if he shows you he's a jerk or he says he's one, believe him. So again, I had this sense of pride where I thought I was enough that I can make a jerk a nice guy. Okay. I'm just going to call it what it is. Thank you. He, I was I had pride, so I I couldn't con I couldn't conceive the idea that I couldn't be nice enough or pretty enough to make him see that I was it. Okay, so that's number two. If he shows he's a jerk, and and he acts like a jerk, believe him. Like he's not playing. I had a guy who told me I'm a jerk. I'm not nice. I'm a a h o l e. Okay. He said that all the time. I'm like, no, you're not. No, I see. I see more. Mm -mm. Don't do it. If he's telling you he's an A-hole, sorry, y'all, then he's probably an A-hole. And so what we end up doing is we start to lower our standards because we want to make that person feel loved and accepted, which is good. I did that for a long time. And what I ended up doing was actually I was telling him that I was okay with him being those things. Right. Run. Yes. And it was a bad thing. I remember my first date, like the whole night, the whole night he was giving me these red flags, like almost on purpose to see how much I feel like if I could look at it spiritually now, it was just like, let's see how much you'll accept. He was giving me red flags all night. Yeah, I like Asian girls. I like little skinny, thin, petite. And I'm like, okay, I'm a thick black girl with nappy hair. Like, I don't look anything like that. He let me know that he went to strip clubs. He let me know that he wasn't going to stick around, that he didn't believe in marriage. And I was so prideful, y'all, that I believed that I could change him because I'm all that. Well, you are all that. We are all that, but not, not enough to change an A hole. Oh, okay. So that's number two. Yeah, ugly, nasty girl. I got stories. So do not, if he says he's a jerk and he shows he's a jerk, believe him. The thing we do, we try to settle and we try to fix people and we cannot fix people. Yes, the devil's a liar. So yes, absolutely. And this guy, oh my gosh, he believed in everything but God. Like it was anything else was cool. But when it came to God and specifically Jesus, oh no. So I knew there wasn't a future in that, but God told me, 
um, I was washing my hands in my, my bathroom. I used to have a clothing store in Chicago and I'm washing my hands and I just met him. I was so excited about him because I thought he was everything I wasn't. He was being a total jerk. Yes, because he had low self-esteem. Didn't know it. But God told me, he said, look, if you pick him, you pick him over me. He legit said it. And I was like, there's no way around that. I'm sure, God, I'm sure I can do it. And I heard that. Like, I didn't hear it, but I felt it here, hearing, feeling in my heart. If you choose him, you choose him over me. And I chose him. And I spent four years, almost four years, going through it and lowering and lowering and lowering my standards. No job, no car, no, no, no job, no, no, no nothing. No car. Couldn't even have a, didn't even have a driver's license. He was 31, 32. I'm going to stop right there. Okay, because I don't want... I, yeah, okay. So that's number two. If he tells you he's a jerk, believe it. He's a jerk. And I was a single mama, y'all. I was stupid. But I had pride and I just thought, yeah, yeah, see, you know. Look, I'm <laughs> I'm replying to y'all like people will know, but I guess if they watch, they'll know. Okay, so that's the, that's the third point. Don't try to change him. You can't change him. You can pray for him and let him go. If you feel like, okay, I've, I've known this guy for a while. He seems like a great guy, but there's, but, 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 pray for him. Live your life. Let God show you who's for you. Do not try to get with the guy. Hold on to him. Yes, that too. <laughs> and don't try to hold on to him and then try to change him. Like, no, because you're wasting your time because we can't get what God wants us to have. We got our hands clenched on something we're not supposed to have. So that is number three. Don't try to change him. That kind of goes on with, you know, believing who he says he is. And number four is know your worth. Yes. Look, that's girl. You're on time. You're on time. We don't think anyone wants us until we know worth. Absolutely. See, Okay, we got another one. When God tells you something, believe it. He will go through some things. Yeah, we'll go through some stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. So know your worth. Like the Bible says you're worth more than rubies. And if a man finds you, then he finds a good, good, valuable thing. Like there's a reason why you are the way you are. You're wonderful. You have gifts. You have talents. You go 110%. Like there's no, first of all, God didn't make any junk. Okay. And unfortunately, sometimes as women, we end up on the tough end of the stick where we're, we seem to be like, I know none of us are innocent, like I wasn't innocent, but you end up in this tough position where you're trying to figure out what happened, right? And you're just like, you, you end up in a bad place, but it's usually because we don't know who we are. Like you, you just don't know yet. And so I didn't know who I was. Like people could tell me I was pretty. People could tell me that, oh my gosh. But I didn't know that I was worth something. So when I was young, I love my daddy, but he told me he was he was kind of kind of mean. He was on drugs. So sometimes he was nice, sometimes he wasn't. We didn't know he was on drugs. We just thought he drank. So we just thought, okay, well, which one are we getting today? So he he did bless me this one time. He said to me, he said, you are going to become more beautiful every day. Because I went to him crying because I used to have all this long hair and I messed it up and I broke my hair off. And then I also had acne coming in at the same time. And I was just, my self-esteem was just around the time that you started looking at boys and I was looking toe up and I remember crying. I was like, dad, my hair is gone. and I got all this acne. And he's like, you're going to become more beautiful every day. Now that was a blessing. But what I remember now, which is thing I'm thankful. That's like the one beautiful thing I remember him saying to me, but here's the thing in the long run, in the deeper level, someone should have said, yeah, I hear you. On the deeper level, somebody said, you're worth waiting for, right? Because then I wouldn't have done anything I wasn't supposed to be doing. You're valuable. You're a daughter of the king. Like, you're precious. Whoever has you is going to be really blessed. You don't just let anyone have you. You see what I'm saying? So that was another layer that should have gone there, but we didn't go there. So that's another thing you have to know your worth. We're grown, so we know how to control our feelings, you know, and our emotions a little bit more than we were younger and you're trying to figure out what's going on down there. But but still, like even if you are a single lady, you don't have to go there. You really should not because he's not your husband and you're worth everything. Okay? The ring is 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 a promise but it is is just the ring but what what's beyond that ring is the promise that it makes meaning 
I'm going to love you, honor you, take care of you. You are as you are, and I love you, right? So it's more than just the ring. And I know somebody, Krista, I think you just got married. So a lot of us ladies, we have gotten into that mindset of getting a man, keeping a man, or, you know, we kind of got that women's lip thing going on where we think we can do what men do. And, and that's, I mean, I'm not saying it, it's not good on either end, but we are too precious to give up what we've been given because somebody feels like, or especially because we think it's going to keep a man like, no, because it doesn't last. So I, I took that. I did that for 10 years. Mm -mm, don't do it. So you have worth, you know, you're precious and you deserve to be honored and loved like all the old school, school stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Take them through the ringer. All the old school stuff, having your chair pulled out for you. Nice dinners. I'm not saying he has to have a lot of money. He may not have money, but can he cook you something nice? Will he, you know, make you something, write your sweet letter? Like, that's still a thing. And I think sometimes we forego that because we just want to get somebody so bad. We want to make it easy. Yes. And growth is needed on both sides. So, yeah, I'm, I'm reading y'all. Y'all so, so blessed. I love y'all. I don't know. I just feel like I need to say these things. So then number five, I guess I'll say is pray for God to show you. So sometimes you see somebody and they check the boxes. So I was always told to write a list of what you want and, and then, you know, you'll, you'll get it. So it's a Christian thing. I think a lot of people in the church say that. And I feel like it worked for me. Now I got four out of five. Um, but can I tell you? I'm sorry, I always have chat lips. Y'all gonna learn that I always have chat lips. Um, you're going to see that there's gonna be a counterfeit before the real thing. There's always a counterfeit before the real thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The counterfeit will come. So if you say, and even if it's not this quote unquote magical list. Even if you say, God, I would really like somebody who likes children. I always say, I want somebody who loves children or got children or wants children because I have children. I want someone who does music because I like to sing and I, it'd be nice if he could help me do that because I was like, I, I want to do that. Um, I said, I want six feet tall and taller because the guy that was a, a wreck was not. I said that. I said, I want him to make a little money. Now, he didn't have that at first, but we worked up to that. So we got some money, a little money. And then um, he's got to love Jesus. He's got to love God. He's got to be a Jesus Christ is Lord declaring man. And that's exactly what I said. And it made people mad. Like, girls, I could tell y'all so much. So I said, that's what I want. Now, the enemy gave me four out of five. Okay, I had the a little money, Jesus Christ is Lord, no music, and he was short, and he was mean and awful. So I had another escapade late. I think it was. I think it was. No, this was early thirties. I'm working in a church, and my sister's like, "It's time, sis. Like you, you need." She points my finger like, "You gotta get married." And I'm like, "Yeah, I want that." She was like, yeah, it's time. I'm like, okay. So we start, I'm starting to get hopeful about this. And I got that Christian girl itch, that 20-something girl itch, right? It's time to get married. So now I got my eye on the radar. And the enemy knows I have the eye on the radar. But I'm I'm foolish enough to, you know, be looking, you know. And I'm wrong with looking. But I'm, I'm asking, are you a Christian? And the guy's like, yeah. And I'm like, led astray again don't get me started but there was one and a guy i guess god was trying to keep us from each other i thought okay he's kind of cute he works where i work but he was like my height and i'm five foot nothing and so yeah i couldn't wear heels or i'll be told him like that was number one and then um we started dating you're welcome we started dating um and he told me, like, his history. He had been a thug. He had been to jail. Like, people might still be looking for him. And I'm like, okay, that's a surprise. But I'm thinking, okay, we got Jesus, right? So, um, this weekend, this weekend, but the weekend before um, I saw him, like, weekends off, God said, he's lustful, he's angry, and he loves money. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I heard you, Lord. Okay, I got you this time. I'm done. 
guess what? That ring, that weekend, he gave me the biggest ring I ever seen. Can I even find anything as big as that ring in this room? Like, it was a rock, y'all. Like, a pyramid, a five foot nothing, nothing. A pyramid, I'm just like, oh. See, the enemy knows what you want. So, he, I didn't have to beg him to marry me. He knew Jesus. Okay. I'm like, okay. But then I disregard everything I heard. So then we start looking at venues. Me and my sister. And my sisters are usually my guard dogs. And they had no, no red flags. And I'm like, this could be it. But, but I know what I heard, right? Okay. So I ignored my father's voice. And I proceeded. I proceeded. This man was everything. He was all of those things God said. Like, y'all, he was like, a little mobster <laughs> and guess what from january to february became this crazy manipulative relationship i ended up being trapped unable to see my children oh my goodness he was so abusive and mentally crazy we end up getting married on valentine's day and I remember wearing a black dress, like a clubbing dress, because I just got saved. I didn't have any decent clothes. And it's my wedding day. I didn't get time to go get a dress. No guests, no nothing. And I'm sitting up there in the middle of the Chicago cold winter on the west side. And I'm like, surely somebody's going to stop this from happening. And I'm like, who's going to? Like, I could even run down the street by myself and be like, okay, I'm going to book it. And I'm just like, somebody's coming. I was like, I can't, I, I just didn't know how to get away from it. I'm just like, I know something's going to happen where I can get away from this man. And nothing happened. I go into church. Like he was scrambling to find a pastor because he wanted to get married, because he wanted to have sex and he didn't want to be sinful. Just be real. And so that guilt was on me and all that. So I'm just like, okay. So I get in there. Nobody's in the church. It's like an empty old Baptist church. Um, it's just us. And the pastor comes to us and he says, like, he just met us. He's like, what are you doing with him? And I'm like, I don't know. Could you not perform this? So we end up getting married. We end up getting married. This man was abusive, crazy. He had cameras in the house. I remember knowing that I had to get away from him. And so I had always kept myself with me. I had my own apartment. And he was trying to get me to give up my apartment. I'm like, I'm not giving up my apartment. Well, you, you got to pay rent here. I'm like, nah, I ain't, I ain't giving up my apartment. So I always kept my stuff close. And I remember one night. He had the cameras in the whole apartment. And I remember sitting there. I'm like, if I don't leave right now, I'm never going to get out of here. So I literally left. Crazy circumstances came back. Got beat up. Like I got beat up. Kids were there. Like I had to take them out in the middle of the street. He took my keys so I couldn't get in my car. I had to call my son's father and he had to come get us from the train station in dead winter Chicago very very cold I think I slept on his couch and the kids you know so I literally had to leave my job because this man was controlling and it's all because I wanted something so bad and I believed I, w I guess I wanted it so bad that I didn't believe what my father said that's number one and number two when you care what people think it's harder to walk away. So in that, people start saying, oh my God, Christy, look at that ring. Oh, God's blessed you so much. You get married. And I'm like, if y'all only knew this man is crazy, somebody help me. So don't do it. Don't do it. Wait, 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 wait. God will never give you anything you're not supposed to have. And he will warn you. Even if you're not like, he loves you. He wants you to avoid those things. So I told y'all a lot of stuff. Sorry, it was so much. That's a mini testimony. And that's one. That's just one of the probably five of my 20s. And I just feel like God wanted me to share that because um, it's real, y'all. It was crazy. Like it legit needs to be a book. It could be part of a book. But my encouragement to you is that if you're hearing God, obey him. Okay. Even if you're like, Lord, I didn't hear anything. What, what do you think about him? Like you can ask. And then if you ask God for certain things, believe that he's going to give them to you and don't settle for less. Sometimes we settle for less. Okay. So the beautiful part of the story is, <laughs> before I leave y'all on a sad note, 
beautiful part of the story is that same year I met my husband, the one I've been married to for seven years, who actually loves Jesus, loves my kids, does music, is taller than six feet, and has a little money, <laughs> right? Everything I wanted on my list. So, you know, I'm not saying there's a magical list, but I'm saying he does give you the desires of your heart and the blessings of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow. So God's not going to give you a marriage that make you have to be in spiritual warfare for the next 50, 60 years. Like he's not going to do that. That's not what he does. And so I knew that if I stayed in that old thing, I'd have to be on my knees praying all the time, trying to fight to make it work. And I'm just like, mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah. So um I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna say it again, but I'll send it to you. So I was just thinking, number one is don't compete with other women. Don't compete for a man's affection. If he has some ideal of what he wants, let him have it. There's no shortage of men. Like I don't care what they say about the population numbers, whatever. God wants you to have someone for you to to complete your family. That's really what I want. Somebody to complete my family. He will do that for you. If, you, if you're a single mama and you want that, he will do that for you. If you're a single girl, he'll do that for you. If you've been divorced or widowed, he'll do that for you if that's the desire of your heart. Just pray and seek his face first. Don't accept just anything because it's there. Don't compete for a man's attention. Okay, a lot of us young girls, we're trying to show this and show that so that they'll want us. No, don't compete. Number one, don't compete for his attention against other women. Or whatever ideal he has, number one. Number two, if he shows you who he is, don't don't try to don't try to make it look better than what it is. Don't think you can change him. Okay. Leave him leave him be. Pray for him. Don't be mean. Just be a lady. You can be a lady and get up from the table and it's like, you know, it's so nice meeting you. But I have somewhere to go. Thank you. It was thank you for yeah, I'll put put your 20 down. Put your 20 down to cover your meal or your drink, whatever you got, and, and you can go. My mom, you know, she always told us not to take anything from anybody. I think she was a little extreme with that. But one thing I always do, if I'm going on a date, I have my own money and my own car. Because you never want to be stranded. You don't want to need a man to get home. Now, I'm not going women's lib. I'm not saying feminism. No, I'm just saying you want to have your own way until you can trust him. So if he's a jerk, you have to walk away. You walk away. Um, so that's number two or three. And don't try to change a guy. You can't change him. You are awesome. You are beautiful. You're a prayer warrior. You love Jesus. You have beautiful, amazing worth. But that won't change somebody who's bent on being a certain way. And number four, know your worth. You're beautiful. You're just gorgeous and God has ordained you he has chosen you from the beginning of the, from before the foundation of the earth that's what his word says for good works that you should walk in them every day you're becoming more and more like God you're becoming more and more like Jesus and Jesus doesn't settle for stuff Jesus never settled he didn't make deals with people who weren't right he didn't make deals with the enemies no he he cast them out so you cast them out. And then number five, and praying God will show you. So I was a very young Christian. So I wasn't necessarily praying about what he should look like, but I did hear him and I, I ignored it. So if you hear it, and it might, and always when you hear his voice, not always, but sometimes it sounds just like you and you'll think it's you. It'll be a spontaneous thing that you hear and you think it's you and it's him. It's your father talking to you. He's a familiar voice. He sounds just like you. And he's his word. Usually there'd be a scripture or it'd be something godly and it'll just come like that. And you'll know he's telling you and warning you and getting you ready. Or it might be something good. Sorry if my approach is negative, but he could tell you something good. Like, wow, your beauty is just is so amazing that, you know, there are going to be a lot of people or you, I don't know. I can't imagine, but he tells us beautiful little things. The enemy doesn't tell you good things. Okay. Number one. So, you know, it won't be him. And God always tells you good things and he warns you, right? An enemy would never warn you that guy over there is a creep or be careful. Or you have this sense of discernment. Like this guy has a lust problem or he watches certain things or he's violent. Like, how do you know that? That's God telling you. So he sounds like you. It's very familiar. And it's almost like a little download of information that you're just going to know. So that's it. If you need more, 
Proverbs 31 is the one. It just tells us what we look like. It's a, it's women like I see on this earth, right, that are doing big things, that are working hard, that are entrepreneurs who let the lights go out very late at night. We're up. We're taking care of children. We're cooking. We're cleaning. We're exercising. We're taking care of our bodies. We're starting businesses. We're working. We're doing multiple things. But the one thing we need to work for, ladies, we need to work on is that husband piece just being very careful who choose who you choose and who's choosing you and make sure that it lines up with what God wants because God won't give you trash. Um Proverbs 31 1, yep, is where it starts out. That's where um the King Lemuel's mom is talking to him. An oracle's telling him not to drink. Um wine that's for people who um who, who it, you can drink wine, okay, I'm going to tell you that now, but she's telling him don't get drunk because it's, it's you know, it's for people who have distresses or who aren't doing well, but she told him to stay sober, um, open your mouth for the mute, she's giving him good advice, so speak for those who can't speak, and for the rights of all those who are destitute, so for poor people, we're supposed to be champions for them, and then she says, open your mouth, judge righteously, and defend the rights of the poor and needy, so she gave him that advice, and then boom, we go into a woman who fears the Lord at Proverbs 31.10, an excellent wife who can find. And this is actually, I, if I remember right from what I'm learning, this is something they would pray over women and like honor them like every week, I think on Sabbath. And my friend Asia, she probably knows that too. Like they want, this is how they would honor women in old Israel um, and over Israel, probably still do. But it just talks about how she's a blessing to her husband. That's what I want you to get. You're a blessing. You're not a liability. You're not um, something someone settles for. And like, oh, I got to finally get married and let it go of the game. No, <laughs> you're a blessing. Someone's blessed to find you and know you and love you and care for you. And you're going to care for him too. It's, a lot of times in our world, we got this idea that men are trapped by us. No, no, it's not a trap. <laughs> it's a blessing. They're blessed by us. And we're blessed by them too. So anyway, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> this is going to be 85 minutes long. But I love y'all. Thank you for the love and support. I have not been in here for a while. So I appreciate y'all just showing me love and encouraging me because I love you. So if you need anything, reach out. You can ask questions in here. You can leave a comment. Y'all can leave inspirational things. Anything you think a woman needs to hear, y'all can share it in here. You can invite your friends. It's just what we want to do. It's just love on each other. So I love y'all. And I just pray a blessing on y'all that God guides you and keeps you and fills you with his love and lets you see just how worthy and beautiful you are, that you are filled with his confidence today on who you are, that you are more than just some option for someone, but you are a worthy choice and that you are filled with the spirit of the living God because you know him and you know his son, Jesus Christ. I pray these things in his holy name, that you are sealed with his Holy Spirit and that you walk Walk as the lady that you are. This lost art of being lady is restored to you right now in Jesus' name. You are worthy and you're far more precious than rubies. That's what the word says about you. So walk in that and know that. Hold your head up high and don't settle for less. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and I decree. I love y'all and I'll see y'all soon. Amen.